quite a walk up the hill, but. Guess um, what we are going to say you now. North Korea. <laughs> so then. I'm waiting for this moment. But... I've been told that, like, people are in the farm working and it's not real. I don't know. I don't that know. Is, that is what we have heard. That's why we have to see that ourselves. I think it's all like propaganda. You never know what to believe. You just keep an open mind and see what you see. Thirty minutes. Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. Ty's super excited for today's video. Did you get your car, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Ty's super excited for today's video. Very excited. We got like three and a half hours of sleep last night. <laughs> now we're off to do something I didn't even think was possible. Oh shit! Come but on. first, let's make it to where we gotta go. It's so interesting seeing Seoul like first thing in the morning. You the city. The city. No, I'm saying like when we got off the bus. Uh, like the, the city is so quiet in the morning because they're so lively all night. Like the city is so alive all night with people like partying and drinking, and having a good time. In the mornings, it seems like really, really calm and peaceful. Yeah, that's what I about to say because people party all night and drink so much. <laughs> There's no meat flavor. It's a tuna kimbap. It's a tuna rice roll. So I will get this one. It's 2,000 won. And I don't think there's anything you can eat, Jim. Okay. Uh, so this is a typical breakfast. This is like when I was in school, I eat this all the time for breakfast. Okay. This is quite confusing. Um, I mean, we got our tickets online. We had booked our tickets online for about 15,000 a piece for first class tickets. And it just said Seoul Station or Yongsan. So we're kind of trying to find it. Seoul Station is quite large, uh, but it connects to like the main train station, the subway station, KTX. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult to find. Connect to airport railway as well. Uh, the lady looked right at our ticket and was like, yeah, you know, just go up here. Maybe you can find the platform if you walk up above. This is just the side entrance. So they're very, very helpful for us. Credit card. Yeah, yeah. Cheap one. Cheap one. I already bought them. Yes, but this payment. This payment. Yeah, I paid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because this is not in ticket. Is it from? Yeah, I'm from the U.S. Yes. <laughs> yeah, book from Thailand. Back, Dorasan, and Seoul. Back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Samida. Ta went completely Asian and got the local. And I got a burger. <laughs> so that's basically what it is. It's a sushi roll. And the reason why they call kimbap is because kim means seaweed, the thing that wrap around here, and pop is rice. <laughs> Instagram saw it first. So head over to Instagram and check out the stories. Stay up to date with exactly where we are. Quick bite to eat before we uh, hop on our first class train ticket all the way across the northern part of Korea. So it should only take about an hour and a half to two hours to get there. Asians and their noodles, I swear to God, every time she sees noodles, it's like, Hi! Hi! Oh, they got noodle balls! I should have it for noodle balls. It's my favorite. They got Thai If you know any Thai girl, Ooh, no, no, noodle! Wait. Three. 
Is it? Yes. What is our seat number? 2A. Such a goofy looking train. <laughs> I know, it's so colorful. It doesn't look like... <laughs> This, the first class, is in the same cart, and it's just the same seat, just with a table in front of you. You have the table, look at, you have like, the separate section. Yeah, it's really nice, I mean, you get a big window, you get the table, like, and I mean, it was only like, 8,900 8, won to get this ticket, so it really wasn't too bad. I mean, what we're doing is a lot cheaper than doing a normal tour. It's quite an interesting uh, design of train they have here. It's like, they call it the peace train. Uh, excuse me. 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 Uh, right after we get in the train for about five minutes, they give us the application form for the Rasan station. And interestingly, all the condition here is in Korean. So <laughs> if you don't know Korean at all, so you just have to sign it no matter what because you oh you already hop on the train. With only three hours of sleep last night, uh, we both passed out. So we woke up and we're actually at a different train station, not Dorasan, and uh, we have to get in line to get a stamp now. Oh man, no, like an hour and a half train ride and you stop at this station right here and then they check all your paperwork and then you finish the train ride up and you end up at uh, Dorasan station. This isn't Dorasan, this is right before Dorasan, but imagine, I'm surprised they don't check the paperwork when you get your tickets issued at the information center just to make sure you have like your passport on you and the correct paperwork. Uh, unfortunately they don't, so if you don't have your passport and you happen to forget it, you're kind of in trouble because you just get to Dorasan station you can't really do anything else. <laughs> This is the, actually the only railroad track that connects North Korea to South Korea and they've actually only had cargo trains go between the two. They've never actually had human passengers go between the two. But um, That was like back then in 2000, what, 2014? I don't know. This is so, so interesting. I, I have no idea what's going on, but it's really cool because we just arrived at Dorasan Station and there's like a... Uh... What? Crazy how many times they actually count the people that are on the tour to make sure... Well, they count when you get on the train. They count while you're on the train. They count when you get off the train. They count when you enter the building. They count when you're in line. They count when you cross the line and then they count when... Yeah, and then they count when you pass through that gate. I think it's a bit like, I think that's cool because I used the bathroom for so long. So then they yeah. know that I'm missing. Yeah, for sure. It's really good that they keep track of everybody, but you can tell that it's cool. It's a very strict. I mean, even when you come in, all the fences around here have barbed wire. It's a very, very strict area up here. I mean, when I was here in the military, it was really, really, really high. High clearance. You can hear the call? I was not here at the DMZ, but I was at the border of the DMZ ah. where that that's where the US trains. Oh, okay. So the US has like bases along the border of the DMZ, North Korea and South Korea. It's just like everything's already set set up. Yeah. Like you walk out, you see the bus right away. There's no way you're gonna be in the train station for five hours until the next train. To go to the DMZ, you need to be with a tour. You can't just go to the DMZ by yourself. Please fasten your seatbelt for your safety. So you have to purchase the 13,000 bus ticket, which will get you on the bus and get you to the DMZ. It'll give you access to the tunnel. It'll give you access to the DMZ and like the tour, basically. It's really quite strange though, because they're playing some like really eerie type music. It's like do 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 do. Like, you feel like you're walking through a horror movie, kind of, but you're in a peace park. There's nobody here. I mean, it's so-so, it's store. 
you pick what you want and you just leave the money here. Wow. I've never seen that in Korea or anywhere else for that matter. Only in the Philippines they and here. They got tea, they got coffee, I think. Yeah, they got like coffee and they got tea. And this one from my first impression. It's like a normal park with the big statue right here. So it's like a, a standard park that you would see in any state or town. I think they show the story mainly, kind of like the exhibition. Look like museum at the same time because of all those pictures ahead of us. So all the windmills they have here at the Peace Park are basically a symbol of wishful reunification for everybody to be happy together and stay together. And that is, that's their symbol of it. Tons of Tons of deers up here. I'm so hungry. It's like 12:40, and we have until 1:30 to get some food. Yeah. So this one, based on what I understand, we pay 7,000 baht. Yeah, per person. Per person, and that is unlimited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can pay by card though. I mean, even. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I didn't think you could. Yeah, me too. How big it is. How it always is. Huh? How it always is. <laughs> A lot of rice, please. We got it. Uh, it's chicken, rice, lettuce with dressing, kimchi. I grabbed a uh, lot. I was so excited. I look like a fat kid right now. So basically, if you guys look here, this is the place for utensil. But I have no more place left. No more space left. So I put my kimchi in this space. It's come with like different slots for you to put things. I fill up everything, basically. Hmm. What are you doing? I know you don't like it. Mm. The seaweed soup is my favorite. I have two bowl, Jimmy one and mine. And that all four of them is a bus it works that way guys nobody is allowed to roam freely here if you are not soldier of course <laughs> it beats the cool. let go let's go <laughs> it seems like they, they get along really well yeah. from the picture yeah. In the in the picture of the exhibition when we went to the Peace Park, doing like conferences like, like, together. Yeah, I'm talking about walking in the park like this together. I don't know if they do it because of the media or not, but it seems like they they are a good friend. <laughs> yeah. The pictures sure make it look like it's kind of like Instagram, right? It's not so friendly. I'm talking about like man hand holding hands. Oh, that's like that's an Asian thing though. Yeah, probably they do that. Asian men hold hands. Asian women hold hands. They all do that. Mom and daughter hold hands like everybody does that you hold my hand don't hold my hand so we just arrived at the observation tower it's quite a walk up the hill but um, guess what we are going to say you know North Korea so that I'm waiting for this moment dude. the third floor is actually full of different telescopes and um, kind of binoculars that you can use to peek over the border into North Korea and see it we've been told that like, people are in the farm working and it's not real. But I don't, I don't know. know. I don't that know. Is, that is what we have heard. That's why we have to see by ourselves. I think it's all like propaganda. You never know what to believe. Or you just keep an open mind and see what you see. But it's all Korea? Yeah. In between is like all these watchtowers all the way around. And they have a huge blue sign or a big blue pole holding a North Korean flag. And on the other side of the, the fence is another big blue pole holding a South Korean flag. Wow. You see it? Yeah. I see that military base. That looked crazy. It looked like a, it, it looked to me like a prison. 
It looked to me like a, a prison to be honest. With a hill that looked like a tomb. And, but it's so crazy because it's in the middle of nowhere. Like all around it's just green. It just woods. It just looked like a jungle and suddenly the military bay pop up. I had no idea that there was four tunnels. So North Korea had built four tunnels at one point in time, all leading to Seoul. That sounded so dangerous, babe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were all going from North Korea all the way to Seoul, over 63 kilometers in length. They said they could transport a thousand people an hour. But you can actually go in the third tunnel. So we're actually walking towards the third tunnel right now. I'm quite excited to see it. So we have to leave everything. No cameras, no phones. Oh, no camera around. Eh? Alright, goodbye guys! So being at the third tunnel, you definitely see a different side of it. Like, you climb all the way down in the tunnel, it's about... 200 meters, she said, 200 meters down. And then you come to a wall, and that like door is the border of South Korea and North Korea. And they actually, North Korea owns half the tunnel, which is 400 meters. And then South Korea owns only 200 meters of the tunnel. But there's not much down there. You just walk down and you see the door and then you turn around and walk back. But it's still a really, really cool thing to see. Ty goes, but where's the bus? We're stuck in the DMZ, Ty. That's going to add a twist to the story because here, babe. When we, when we get in the tunnel, there's like tons of bus here. And then when we walk out, there's one bus left and it's not us. <laughs> and I, Imagine I that. I remember it's red and Jimmy said it's not red. No, it's not red. It's white. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Stuck at the DMZ. Uh, I'm quite upset because um, every time I've gone to, like when I was in the military, every time everybody ever went to the DMZ, the, one of the main parts of going to the DMZ is to see the blue buildings and cross the line into the border. Like you can see like North Korean soldiers staring at South Korean soldiers and they didn't even take us there. So I wouldn't take the train all the way here and take the tour with them. I think it's a waste of money. I mean, the only thing you can see is the tunnel and everything else is in Korean. In tunnel and you can go to the observatory. But that one is like you kind of like look look at North Korea through the binocular. Binocular, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is like they said that they would take us to unification village. So basically there are four main things that they say on the bus that they will take us to. It's say Dora Sun Station, which is here. This is Dora Sun Station. <laughs> so it's basically the place where they pick us up and drop us off. Next is Unification Village, they say. But the Unification, unification Village is basically the peace part that we went the first stop. That's what we think because we didn't go to a village. There's no... So it's, in the, it's in the village, but... We get a chance to get off the bus in order to go to the park and we get a chance to get off the bus in order to go in the canteen and the souvenir store and Cali Cafe, ice cream shop, those stuff. And next, they said they would take us to observatory. Which we went. Observatory, which yeah. we went. Yeah, we went there and we uh, looked through binocular to see North Korea. And then the last one is the tunnel, which we are not allowed to film, so we can't really show you guys. But it's just the tunnel. I don't. I don't know. I just. I. I wouldn't. I wouldn't come to the tour. It's, I. I think it's a waste okay. of money, personally. That's my personal opinion. I mean, I would go maybe with a tour in English think, from I, Seoul on a bus, but we thought it would be cool to take the train and kind of. I mean, she said that when she got on the bus, when she first started speaking, she's like, yeah, I'll speak in English as well. And she didn't speak in English. It was all Korean. So it was very difficult as a foreigner. But I mean, it's still something to see. It's still something to do. If you want to see it and do it on <coughs> your own and take the train, by all means, you can. But I, I, would, I wouldn't do I it would, again. I would recommend actually to go by bus right away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, go by, by the bus, the tour bus, and then get the most information, like... You so, possibly can. Yeah, I feel like something like this, we have been telling you guys about this, like, so many times. That's, like, for example, when we were at Angkor Wat, something that has so much history into it. I think we need, we definitely need somebody who knows the information and somebody who can speak English and explain it.
as a guide. That's one of the reasons why doing some food tours or doing some accounted and guided tours are actually very beneficial because uh, you get right information and a lot of it. Whereas here it was like really difficult to do this tour on your own and I feel like we missed out on the main thing. So, I don't know. You can't do it by your own though. That's the thing. Well, no, I mean, do it by our own as in come on the train uh, and get the tour from the train station. It's cheaper, but if you pay like $10 more, yeah. you get information. You you get a guy that can speak English well. You get to go to a lot of important places. So, me personally, I would rather pay $10 more and go buy a tour that I can get the information and know what's going on with this place. So this one, oh, to me, sorry, babe. This one is basically like the guy doesn't go allow, go around with us. So she sit on the bus waiting for us together with the driver. And we have to go every place we go down, explore place by ourselves, come back up. And then just on the bus, we see her there. She doesn't go along and tag along with us. So that's Whoa. the thing you need to expect. The what train happened? goes from Seoul to Moscow. <laughs> so? This is the one dish that if you don't eat it fast, it'll literally run from you. It'll just swim away. <laughs> so it comes with sesame oil. I guess this is salt and 